welcome to Dear SQL DBA, a podcast and YouTube show for SQL Server developers and database administrators. I'm Kendra Little from SQLWorkbooks.com. This week's show is about a question from a SQL Server DBA who's made some mistakes and is having a hard time of it. They write in, I love my DBA career, but I'm feeling down after making some mistakes at work. My confidence level is going down day by day as I get introduced to the importance of the DBA's responsibility and the risks of making decisions. This is one of the toughest things about being a database administrator. People want experience when they hire DBAs often, right? You know, hiring managers really, and, and that's why it's hard to get into being a DBA is people are looking for people with experience. What, what they're actually looking for is people who have broken things and have learned from their mistakes, essentially, right? When we're talking about people having experience that they've learned from, that's not usually experience where everything worked perfectly. It's experience where we messed up and picked ourselves up, dusted ourselves off, and tried to figure out, okay, well, how do I not make that mistake again next time? It is very, very natural and in many ways a good thing as you go through a database administrator career to break things. I mean, not obviously not on purpose. <laughs> You don't need to break things on perfect on purpose because they're going to break no matter what. I mean, looking back at my own career, oh the oh the mistakes I've made. <laughs> I mean, there's there's obvious highlights that jump to my own mind that time, you know, early on where I accidentally dropped a database in a dev environment and, you know, ground that team to an entire halt. They couldn't do end-to-end -end testing. And I had to own up to it. And just, you know, little goofs as well as big goofs over the year. But there's even the fact that as we learn from experience, hopefully we don't break the exact same things again. But as we grow and use new parts of the technology, we have new things break on us, right? Maybe we start to use something like availability groups. And maybe the things that break are our fault or aren't our fault. It might be that we hit bugs or that we hit issues with the way the product is designed versus the way we use it. There's all manner of things that can break. I mean, even, even if you're always very careful to specifically follow best practices and try to only do things that you've tested, as long as you are learning and growing, things are going to break in the process of you learning and growing. It is uh, tough, especially for those of us who feel real reward out of making things work and want to make our customers happy. Having breakages and outages that make our customers unhappy if we feel responsible for that, can be quite tough. So you, as you move through the DBA career, there is, there's always a level of risk involved. And how you manage that risk and how you approach it can be key to helping yourself not take it too personally, as well as mitigating the risks for your customers and for your business owners. So there, there are ways to do this. It's, it can be rough to constantly uh, be having things break on you related to decisions you made about how to do things. But I think there are coping strategies, if you will. And the biggest coping strategy that I found to work with this is change management. Change management can sometimes just be this thing we're forced to do. These are forms that you have to fill out. In some organizations, it's very uh, sort of cold and informal, and it seems just like hoops you have to jump through. But you can really make change management something helpful for you and something, I mean, literally, the idea behind change management is how to be 
smart about making changes and handling things like changes not going exactly as we planned, right? That's kind of built into this art of how do we do changes. So when we think about change management and, and the way that I think it can help you is the most, the most obvious part of change management is what are we going to change, right? But when we're doing planning a change, you know, and taking on that responsibility, the question, what is the best way to do the change is a big one. So there, there's often many different ways that we could deploy a change. What is the most repeatable way that allows us to test it identically to the way that we deploy it? Um, mapping that out and giving good thought to that, very good first thing to do. But also, after we map out, okay, what is the best way to do the change? An important thing to think about, even if this isn't required as part of your change management, I would make this part of mine. This is honestly the, when when my change management system changed to include this question, it was the best thing that happened to us, is map out for every change, big and small, if this goes wrong, what is the worst thing that's going to happen? Another way to think about this is, what is the potential largest impact to our customers and our business if this blows up? In the worst case, how who is it going to hurt and how bad is it going to hurt them? You want this to be something that you know, but you also want this to be really, really clear to the person that approves the change because this may influence how they think about the change too. So this customer impact, if you don't know it for the change, you may need to talk to other people to find out. But it is absolutely worth the time to do the footwork to say, okay, if this blows up, how how big a deal is that and how much is it going to hurt? Another thing for every change, big and small, to help manage this is, what are our options for undoing it? And this, of course, depends on our environment, how we're doing the change, what the change is. If we simply, you know, if this change goes absolutely wrong, is it easy to undo it? Is it difficult? Is it going to involve data loss? You know, what are the options for it? And map that out. There may, this this sometimes is very easy, but sometimes it's very difficult. And you want that to be really clear as well. This is both helpful for the person who's approving the change, but it's also thinking of you later on because you don't want to first think about this question of how do I undo it after the change has gone wrong. You want to already have this. And thinking about this before you even deploy the change sometimes changes how you're going to deploy it. Sometimes you get to this point of, okay, how am I going to undo it? And then you're like, okay, hang on. We're going to actually go back and change the way we implement it a little bit so that there is an easier rollback option. So this can absolutely make your life better, easier on. Is there something that you can ask for to lower the risk of the change or to make that rollback easier? Sometimes you get to the point where you're like, okay, given what we have now, here's how we're going to do it. And Here's the risk it has, and here's how we're going to roll back. Sometimes you get that list of things, and you're like, whoa, this isn't a pretty picture. But if I had another server or a different setup or something, you know, it, it, brainstorm, what things could I have that would either make rollback easier or lower the risk or somehow make the, this easier? It may cost money. That's fine. But brainstorm what they are, and you can list that and talk to the change approvers about, okay, the, the risk here is big, but we could mitigate this by making an investment. Now they may say no, but that's their choice. And this is, this is this part of the change, thinking through this part every time, is there a way we could make this easier, also helps move you towards thinking in this advisory aspect, which is really important as you grow as a DBA, is to be able to say, where should we invest to make changes safer and to, you know, give us more flexibility for our customers? 
always ask for a review of each of those pieces. Once you've got, okay, here's how we're going to do it. Uh, here's how we're going to undo it if it goes bad. Here's the worst thing that could happen. And here are my ideas for, for things that might make my life easier. Find a peer or someone in technology. I mean, ideally, this is another DBA to review this, but maybe also it's a developer. And say, can you think of other ideas? You know, does this seem like the best way to you? Having a review for every change generally means you're going to be doing reviews for someone else's change too. But asking for this help is really, I mean, other people have great ideas. <laughs> they really do. No matter how much I move in my career, I'm like, this seems obvious, but like, I never get to a point where like, I don't want someone else's input on, do you see a different way to do this that might be better? Because other people have amazing ideas. And even sometimes if they don't, have like an answer or an idea, sometimes they'll just ask you a question that gives you a great idea. So even if the hardest thing, it, it really is tough to be a DBA when you're the only DBA in the company. But even if it's someone who's a network administrator who doesn't know much about the SQL Server, even, even in that case, having them review your change can spur them to ask great questions of you. Why do you have to do it this way? That can lead you to those ideas. So you really want the review to help you figure out, are there you know, ways that are safer or uh, more efficient for you? Review from a, uh, a fellow technical person is truly, truly worthwhile. What you want change management to help you do over time too is to get really good at saying, I need some help. As I mean, this is one of the things that's really kind of unclear about progressing in technology. And I think this is true for almost everyone in technology. As you become more senior, it isn't that you know everything, it's that you get, hopefully, better and smarter about handling situations where you're like, I'm not sure of the best way to do this, but I can find out. And saying, I need extra resources, or I need a review of this, or I need someone to brainstorm with me. As you become more senior, you don't do less of this. In, in many ways, you should do more of this. Um, because as someone who has a greater and greater understanding of the technology, I mean, these technologies, see, are, they're so complex that you start to understand more about how much you don't know and where you could use extra detail and extra expertise there. So a big, to me, part of handling changes as a DBA is essentially, you know, you're optimizing the change. You're, you're saying, okay, what I have a, a set of things I need to do. What is the, what, with the tools I have, what is the best ways to optimize this? Are there additional things that could help me optimize it better? And then also ask for asking for help and for a review of, do you see a way to tune how to do this change? It's all about optimization and identifying the areas where you're a little fuzzy and want some help. A big pitfall that can happen on this journey as you're handling and managing changes and dealing with places where it goes wrong and you have to use plan B and you're dealing with unexpected uh, outcomes from changes, over time, as you get your confidence back, you may fall into another sort of problematic area, which I fell into for a while myself and a lot of DBAs do, where you just want to say no. <laughs> People come up with these crazy ideas. What if we do X? What if we do Y? What if we do Z? And you're just like, no, it's going to go wrong. No, <laughs> no. There is a reputation of DBAs as just, you know, a batch script. Like the DBA, all they are is just a batch script that constantly, when you give it an input, it just outputs no. Well, there's reasons not to be like this. Number one, it doesn't actually, I mean, in my experience, it absolutely didn't make me any happier. There's real things that are useful to say no in your career. I'm not saying that saying no is bad. Um, managing your time and managing your projects is very important and setting boundaries is very important. But when you become 
The person who's, you know, like afraid of change and is just always like, no, that won't work. When you aren't open to possibilities, it just puts you in this limited space where your experience stops growing. People don't want to be creative with you anymore because you just say no and you become increasingly isolated. So there are, you know, you have to manage as a DBA with changes coming in and all sorts of stuff coming in. You have to be careful and be selective. And when you say no to things, like perhaps there just isn't time to do something because of priorities. Instead of just saying no, you want to say, you know, what's interesting about it, but then explain with the prioritization of things, look, that's not going to fit and give people a path to, okay, if these priorities need to change, that's the the person you need to talk to, but something else is going to have to fall off the list. I mean, this is a really tough balance. (laughs) It all... It always is going to be tough, but in my experience, just trying to always say no doesn't make it easier anyway, because people figure out how to go around and try to make it happen, and then it it comes back on you anyway. So trying to always say no, in my experience, doesn't really save you time and doesn't really make your life happier. So so be careful of that pitfall. Uh, Stay collaborative while you are staying cautious, because... We want to be cautious with changes. We want to follow a process that finds the best, safest, most reliable way to do them and to handle those times when the unexpected happens. Um, But, you know, we do want to stay open to change. We have to stay open to change. If we never did changes, we would never upgrade our SQL servers. We would always be, you know, we would never get patches. We We would never get fixes for problems. Of course, those fixes always involve risks and other things can go wrong. So even just in the patching process, um, we have to encounter risk. Um, No guts, no glory. So I I completely get where you're coming from in this question. And I feel for you, uh, keep your chin up. And really, even if you don't have a change process or your change process is very different from this, you can add parts to the process that you bring to it. Maybe they don't end up on the official change form, but maybe things like that impact statement of the worst thing that can happen, maybe you can add that to the notes field. And maybe you can start having those conversations. You can absolutely map all this stuff out for yourself and ask for the review even if you're not required to. And I bet what will happen if your change process isn't, you know, if it's very minimal, I bet other people will really see the value in in what you're doing. You don't normally have to kind of push this on other people. If you're asking them for help with your changes, they'll say, hey, that's kind of a great idea. Um, I have a change that I'm going to do, and I I would like your help with it too. It will will kind of spread because collaborating and helping one another on changes really makes it usually for teams – more interesting and more fun and helps give you that sense of the team working together and being in it as a team. So thanks so much for the great question. I really enjoyed it. It was a tough one. That is one of the toughest questions that I have answered yet. If you have a question for Dear SQL DBA, hit me up at sqlworkbooks.com slash ask take a free course while you're there. I've got a free course on management studio shortcuts and secrets. And also one of the most fun things I've been doing lately, I've been sending out a weekly quiz at the bottom in the footer of sequelworkbooks.com. Look for the little dinosaur and sign up for my weekly quiz letter every Tuesday. You will get a little newsletter with a link to a quiz in your mailbox. It is lots of fun to make the quizzes and also to take them, I take my own quizzes and I, I, I declare, if you like SQL Server, they are actually really fun. Thanks a bunch and I'll see you next week.